How's it going, guys? So this question that I wrote is based off of one that I saw on one of the new 2CK and BME exams. Now, I recognize many of you are studying for step one, but this is nevertheless a factoid you should be aware of. I am not going to make this a 19-minute clip. I will cut to the fucking chase for you, give you a high-yield factoid. So before we get started, I will be my typical asshole, tell you to subscribe to my channel. I really appreciate it. Hit the like button, really appreciate it. Find me on Instagram at melman underscore medical, M-E-H-L, M-A-N underscore medical. Link is down below. Find me on Telegram, recently created a Telegram group and channel. Links are down below. Now, starting the question here where we have a 23-year-old guy with a painless lateral neck mass that should instantaneously raise the red flag for Hodgkin lymphoma on USMLE, which is almost always a B-cell neoplasm. Now, if the question doesn't show you an image of the Reed-Sternberg cells, the pathognomonic uh, owl eye appearing cells that you see on lymph node biopsy, then you are reliant on the vignette. And you need to know that painless lateral neck mass is pretty much always what they're going to say. And then they're also going to add a descriptor. And there's three main vignettes I have observed on the NBME exams. Okay, NBME is USMLE, exactly the same thing. So your vignettes are number one, painless lateral neck mass, generally in a young adult, 20s to 50s. So painless lateral, your first vignette, painless lateral neck mass plus palpable supraclavicular lymph node, Verkhoff node, Verkow node, okay, Trucio sign of malignancy as we have here with splenomegaly, all right? So that's your first vignette. Your second vignette, painless lateral neck mass plus hepatomegaly, that's it. Your third vignette, painless lateral neck mass plus mediastinal mass, which is not thymoma, it's mediastinal lymphadenopathy. That's how Hodgkin presents on USMLE, okay? If they don't show you the Reed Sternberg cells, you need to know those vignettes. So the question's asking, what would we see in the serum? And our answer is merely increased serum LDH. You say, well, that's fucking weird. What's that about? I know, I agree, it's weird. So that's the answer on the 2CK and BME exam. Sounds very factoidy, like a step one question, right? But uh, I checked the literature and apparently hypermetabolism, quote unquote, in Hodgkin disease can increase LDH levels in patients. And it's actually a negative prognostic indicator slash marker if serum LDH levels are increased. So patients will frequently have increased LDH as well as increased ESR in Hodgkin. Now, the other answer choices, they're just distractors, potassium levels not going to change. Hematocrit, you could say, well, couldn't patients who have malignancy essentially have bone marrow infiltration, et cetera, uh, and have anemia? It's possible, but at the end of the day, we have to ask, well, what's the best answer? And USMLE wants increased serum LDH as a better uh, marker, okay? A better answer when we're talking about Hodgkin disease. TSH, wrong fucking answer. I mean, we're not talking about a median, uh, a midline neck mass where we, t that's, uh, those differentials are disparate altogether. Okay. Thyroglossal duct cyst, et cetera. But I said, I was not going to make this an extended clip. So painless lateral neck mass plus various descriptors, as I talked about before, that's high yield for Hodgkin lymphoma on USMLE. You know the deal. I'm going to continue making more content. If you like my stuff, subscribe my channel. And appreciate your time. That's it.